Hello, my name is Nicole Ackerman. I'm chairwoman of IFT Germany and board member of IFT International. And today I have the great honor to welcome you all to our annual WIFT Berlinale event in 2022. It's the 17th edition already. So this year's headline, Make Them Laugh, is inspired by a quote from the movie classic Singing in the Rain from 1952. And the comedy genre seemed like a focus we would all enjoy while participating in an industry gathering. And with this ongoing pandemic, it's also about making things work while circumstances might be challenging. So we do have an excellent lineup today of industry professionals on the panel and at the Queen's tables, which is the result of the WIFT community at work. This includes my fellow board members in Germany who reached out to their industry connections. And it's also possible because of the contribution of so many international colleagues from other WIFT chapters, including WIFT Italy, Israel, Africa and Nigeria, Ireland, Swan, Switzerland, WIFT Sweden, Finland, Norway, Iceland, Denmark, and Lithuania. A very, very big thank you to you all. And before we begin with the program, I'm happy to announce that Berlinale's executive director, Marietta Riesenberg, will join us right after the first part of our program too. And now please welcome my very dear friend from Sweden who has been massively contributing to this event this year as she has so many years before. 11 actually we found out earlier. <laughs> I'm sure most of you know her. She's president of Fifth Sweden, president of Fifth International. She's one of a kind and a driving engine in growing this global WIFT network. So please welcome Helen Conquest. Thank you very much, Nicole. It's such an honor to be here today and a big applause. I would like to start to reach a big, big thank you and a big hug and a big kiss to you and the German board for all the effort you put to put in to bring us all together here today. It's fantastic. And uh, as some of people said before we opened up for, for the audience, this power we see. Uh, I just want to give you a short overview of what WIFT is. Maybe some of you know it, but our network started in Los Angeles in 73 as a reaction to the male dominance, and we are still there. But today we are growing, we are getting bigger and bigger. The last couple of months, we have new chapters started in Estonia, in Kentucky, in Bhutan, in, um, um, in Namibia, and in Botswana, that are the few of the new chapters that have joined this, this group of ours. And we have three pillars. We have its visibility to make women visible on screen behind the camera, its connection to connect us all over the globe to one strong common voice and knowledge to share and, and to create knowledge. And I think that is what's happening all the time. And I'm awfully proud of being um, representing this network together with the board that right now represents five continents. So it's a big honor for me to, to be part of opening this event, but also to introduce a completely amazing woman to you. And I will read from my phone. Kisi Dugan is currently writing and producing an animated feature with director and former, former Disney head animator, Lino Di Salvo. Uh, titled De Bada, Badadalisk and E Casa Mortare. That's Italian. That is an Italian block comedy she wrote with director Claudio Almendola, and it streams next month on Amazon Prime. Kissy worked as an actor and a stand up comedian before focusing on writing all the time. She is my own private chicken, and that is the story behind that. I won't tell you today, and she makes me laugh every time we meet. So I'm so proud to introduce you to Kissy Dugan. Chicken, Kissy, she's a mammal, she's a bird. Hello, hello. Thank you, Helen. Thanks for having us today. I'm, um, I'm super excited to bring you guys three amazing women from different parts of the world, um, all of whom take on the daunting, sometimes dangerous, and delightful task of making us all laugh. Um, to start with, we have a multi-talented, 
multi-hyphenated actor, writer, director, producer, I think also songwriter. Um, she is currently having great success with the series she created on ZDF. The second season is about to premiere, so stay tuned. And if the streamers are smart, they'll take this thing global because it's hilarious. Please welcome Alice Gruya. Alice? There she is. Hi. <laughs> Next, we have a treasure from the Italian comedy world, a woman whose career spans decades and goes not only from film, TV, and radio, but also on the stage. She is currently touring with her one-woman show, um, Dal Vivo Sono Molto Meglio, which it translated means live and in person, I'm even better. Um, she is an Italian Golden Globe winner for first and Os the text film the the magnificent presence and she's teaming up with the fabulous Osbitek again uh, as a series regular on the highly anticipated I can't wait everyone can't wait Disney Plus's Fate Ignorante Paola <laughs> Minaccioni hello and hello I'm so proud to be here. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you. here. And finally, uh, we have seen her work across the globe in the award-winning, spectacular Scandinavian series, The Bridge. And maybe you've seen her more recently on BBC's Crossing the Atlantic. She is at Berlin Alley this week to premiere something a little um, different, I think, um, from her usual fabulous work. She is premiering HBO Max's comedy called Lust this week at the Berlin Alley. Please welcome Sophia Helen. Sophia Helen. <laughs> Third time's a charm. We got no Sophia. Okay, we will start <laughs> without Sophia. Um, <laughs> ladies, thank you for joining us. Um, my first question is to, to both of you, having had started out as actors, what made you expand and transform your CV to include writing, directing, producing, all of that good stuff? Elise, let's, um, let's start with you. Thank you for inviting. First of all, my microphone was mute when you introduced me. Um, I started as an actress and I was convinced I was going to do that only, but then I um, didn't like the fact that I was very dependent on others and I was living in Australia after my um, theatre training in Germany and I thought, uh, okay, well, I can't hang on, hang at the beach all the time and I can't just do my documentary, which I was doing already. But then I also started writing because I thought I would write a play with a German character in it that only I could play. And that was my first um, intention, like um, giving me um, a job in Australia <laughs> that I didn't get, but I mean, because I didn't actually do the play, but that was a first step to get into writing and to realize that this is actually a little bit like um, acting, but just, that I could be everybody, not only one character, or like that I could feel with all the characters. And then I realized it was something I that felt easy and um, where others also um, encouraged me to continue this path as well. And then one thing led to the next and yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just realized, I didn't even say the title of your series. It's Lou Von Loser, which is like the best title ever. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was an easy one somehow. I don't know. I'm not too good with title, but but this one came came while while I was writing it. Well, it's it's a it's a total winner. If you haven't seen it, uh, if you're in Germany, go out and do it today. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. But um, Paula, tell me because you had such a successful career across so many margins. Why did you, you were, you were writing as a, as a comedian and as a radio presenter and all of that, but now you've moved into directing. And so tell me a little bit about how you started writing and directing for film in recent years. Oh, uh, yes. Um, well, um, I, I always wrote, I always wrote for radio, as you, as you say, for the stage, my stand-up shows. 
and uh, it it happened to me to write an episode and um, i i really really um, uh, didn't didn't know i didn't want to do it but i did it i did it a little a little uh, short film short film and my colleagues other actors here in italy did li really like this this short movie and so they pushed me to to go on to go on so um now now i can i can wait writing i can't wait uh, this is a new phase for me and uh, many opportunities started to grow after the the short movie i i think um most of all i like to write something uh, a story that is funny to me because it's very difficult for for me to find something i agree uh, my uh, i like my style of comics um i i did a lot of comic film in italy but the characters female characters are always the same so i really got bored and so i i tried to 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 write for me for me as alice and uh, it's very funny also because i don't want to uh, my my first uh, goal is to make people laugh also with my film don't i don't want to speak about me i want i want to write stories that were that are funny for everybody so i think it's a very good point <laughs> i would like to to continue that's that's a way it's funny because um both of you seem to have similar to, to my experience taken on other tasks to take control of yeah. your own career path no yeah yes to take control i don't want to give up to be an actress i like to be being an actress but trying to to choose have the possibility to choose and to give new stories for women and for male uh, to invent new stories so um i i feel like having uh lived a long time uh that comedy for women has really changed and we've there has been in the past this glass ceiling even in the space of comedy and there was this notion that you know women aren't funny and back in the day in stand-up comedy they would only book one woman for months and for a month or two whatever it was there was a rule that like you just there don't be a lot of you, please. <laughs> and so now I feel like that's changing. And I'd love to know from you all, I feel like the character, Elise, that you created um, resonated so strongly with me because it was so specific and it was so offbeat and it's reminiscent of like a flea bag type character. So can you tell me what you set out to do with this with this very lovable but oddball strange woman that you brought to the screen? Um, well, I think um, I just wanted to show um, pr probably a woman that I haven't seen on screen before. And so she I when I started thinking about her and I wanted to show a woman not only who struggles with motherhood or with becoming a mother, but also with life in general and the way she acts, um, like that she's at least very aggressive and somehow not being able to be a proper woman, whatever that means, but an adult woman and like not getting over the teenage phase in a way and being also a passive character. I think that's what we not see a lot because when whenever we develop stories also like script consultants and everyone who's involved they're all saying that you have to have a goal and you have to kind of follow those rules and of course they all make sense i, I get it but i think still um i don't know so many people in real life they don't not always have a goal and they are but they are passive and they let themselves guide by others and um yeah so i think that's very relatable and i thought and i thought that's um uh, that's what i want to do that's what i would like to see myself as well well it really it really um struck a chord with me i am absolutely in love with her and i cannot wait to see season two 
<laughs> Thank you so much. You. Um, there's also this notion that we've heard from executives, we've heard from networks that comedy doesn't travel because there are so many specific cultural points of view and uh, mores or ethics that come into play. So I wanted to know from both of you, we'll start with you, Paola. Do yeah. you think that comedy can resonate universally? Do you think it does travel? Doesn't it travel? If so, why? I'd love to just hear your thoughts on that. Well, I think it depends. Uh, would, you, would you say that things about uh, Charlie Chaplin or Woody Allen? Uh, I don't think so. So I think, if you if you are able to to tell a story about human beings, really a true deep story, you can you can go you can travel. It depends on what you say, what you tell. I think it just this is the question. Yeah, I think you're right. It has to come from this kernel of truth and then grow from there. Yes, it becomes a smarter comedy that way. And Sometimes physical comedy telling, telling very specific stories, very full of details make the film uh, univers universale, universal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, For sure. So For it sure. depends on how deep you go when you tell a story, I think. Yes. And it's universally true that falling is funny. You can, yeah. fall, everyone falling is funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sophia, welcome to the panel. Thanks for joining us. Oh, you're muted, sweetie. <laughs> I'm so hi everybody. I'm hi. so sorry that I that I missed this, and I have to uh, admit I'm a bit uh, yeah. nervous for going to Berlinale with the comedy. So I guess I was stressed up, and I missed the time. I'm so sorry. No, we're still we're still <laughs> rolling. So you're you're yeah. you're fashionably Great. late and comedically yeah. on time. <laughs> Great, good, thank you. Thank so you. this new um, series, not series, sorry, this feature Lust, if, if you haven't read about the premieres on Monday uh, the 14th, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it because it's about yeah. women over the age of 40. The topic is sort of making Sweden sexy again. I thought Sweden was always sexy, but I could uh, be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying to keep up with that sexiness but you know this time kind of the lifestyle we have developed in the western world is not so easy to combine with sexuality all the stress and all the screens and all the you know and the responsibility everything yeah. so yeah it, we're so happy grateful and honored but also nervous all of us actually today i have to admit it's just, but because uh, this is a real departure for, for you, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. So what, how did the process come about that all of a sudden you are co-creating and starring in a comedy that, it, that it, it, it's, it's high time. I can't wait to see your comedic chops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just wrote to my friends because we are a group of friends. Who, we have developed this since 2015 before Me Too and everything. Uh, this started so I just texted to my friends yesterday are we mad or are we extremely cool Do, making a comedy about sex and Maybe not you're being both. known <laughs> yeah uh, that's the conclusion <laughs> both because you know to, to just go into comedy and say and sexuality and say we're funny and this is funny that's insane but that's uh, what we are doing so it's Pretty just, sure uh, when I'm sexy, I'm very funny. <laughs> yeah, I think you. Not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, but it's such a vulnerable subject in sexuality, so therefore it's uh, easy to make fun of, and, and it's something that we all we all need it. But it's so difficult sometimes, and especially when when it comes to getting older as a woman, it's not so easy to combine the feeling of feeling very attractive and sexy. And, and embracing your own lust. If, sure. I mean, one of the premises for the series is that if you look at society visually, we are almost uh, invisible after like 40, 45 in newspapers and advertisements and so on. So my question is how, how is it, how if you're not confirmed in your own existence, how, how sexually aroused are you? 
Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a topic of conversation that's come up a lot in the coming years, and I think that it's our generation that's saying it. Like, just because what what happens to us after forty something, like who fucking cares? We, I, I think, the older I get, the more I have to also offer the world, and especially yeah. when it comes to comedy, because so much starts to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, you talked about you guys being scared it is i i find it is scarier to release a comedy out into the world because what you think is funny is not what i think is funny it's not what she thinks is funny so uh, at least was that an issue for you in 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 creating uh lou von loser was that sort of was the fear of oh my gosh will it land was it was it there for you yeah um, uh, it's there. Do you want to ask me or is this? In, oh, sorry. I was asking Elise. Elise. Mm -hmm. um, I think I never had the attention really to make people laugh, first of all. I thought, um, of course, there is a specific tone in it, uh, like the tonality is um, very specific, mm -hmm. but I didn't really, I didn't see it as a comedy. I, it has, of course, I, I'm, I'm very glad people laugh and um, um, have a good time with it. And um, I knew it's not a drama, that's also for sure, but I didn't, I just wanted to be honest, I think. And the mo and most, and in, in the most, in a more, in a, in a very detailed way, or um, just observe this woman and her surrounding and her feelings and the other characters as, as good as I could. And um, yeah, so I just thought, hoped I am, um, that people, despite her way of being, kind of can relate to her and don't think, oh, she's just closed off and I can't really approach her. So, um, and I think if that worked fine, I'm very, I'm very glad that, um, yeah. And now, Paolo, what about you? Because you are the quintessential comedian of the group. So maybe it's less scary for you to deliver comedy or is it, do you find it, um, not so because you're so used to doing it you're so, so used to landing the jokes or is it how do you feel about how, do you think there's more of a risk with comedy oh sorry i didn't get the the the, the question the the we're talking about the how dangerous it is and how risky it is to release a comedy into the world. But for you, being a, a, a comedian in the purest sense, is it as scary for you? Or is it something you're just used to? Or do you still get <gasps> like every time nervous? When no, you're no, 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 I don't get nervous. No, no, I don't get nervous. I, I just have fun, really, really, I admit. I, I think it's a miracle to be, to make people laugh. So I think it's uh, uh, to make people laugh is uh, uh, you can you can bring people to revolution. You you can make people open open everything. You, they open it. They 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 eyes. They mouth. Their breath. They are they are in the possibility to reach anything you 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 give to them. So it's uh, I think it's very. It's very. Um, I'm very. I'm very proud to be comic, but uh, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not afraid to be comic. I think um, we should improve our humor, and uh, because because to write comic uh, comic, you you should you should study. You should uh, you should be clever. It's not so fun. So so easy to to write comic things. No, I, it's I, much I, harder. I That's why it's no. so dangerous. It's no. so much more see, difficult. See, it's much more difficult, but I don't think it, there is a way you can uh, get it. You you must have it in your brain and in your body. Uh, you must uh, you must be like that. You must watch the world with your eyes, looking at comedy, also in drama. I think you you have to change your point of view. Perhaps you you have to be born like that. <laughs> I'm sorry for my English. I'm just no, you're amazing. English. Your English is amazing. Okay, 
Okay, I'll, I'll make some faces so, so you, you, you will understand me with my face. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, I do it like that. <laughs> you're, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. Most, of, most great comedians are sort of born with something. There is another section of it that is very much learned through observation, through technique, through all of that. It's, yes. it's more rare, but some people just have that thing. Um, and so it, it, it can evolve, but I think you are a person who's naturally funny, like you're born funny. Yes, when I was a child, it was, it was, a, it was a problem to me. I, oh. I felt different, I felt strange, I felt too funny, I, I felt not, not well, no? <laughs> but little by little, I understood the, the strong, how strong you can be, uh, how, how illuminating you can be for, for people. So uh, first of all, in my life, I would like to make people laugh, laugh uh, with the cathartic uh, movement, cathartic stories. Uh, I would like people to, to see themselves in my films and to understand what, they, what, what, what it's happening to them uh, through stories. I would like to, to, to write stories uh, I would like people to go to, to see my film and to forget I'm a woman, to forget. I would like them to forget I'm a woman. I would like to, to write a story without, without sex because I think they should, yeah. we should write good stories and good characters and new stories and new characters and just have the result. <laughs> uh, that's my Funny, funny goal. doesn't have a gender. Yeah. Yes, because so for guys. many years, Sorry, sorry. No, no, sorry, sorry. Not because, because we didn't have the voice for many, many years. And so each time a woman can, can write a story, she, she tells about problems about a woman or struggles. And so people go to see women uh, film thinking, oh, some problems. They, they, they'll tell us some problems. Okay. Okay. They'll tell us the women problems. And, and so people don't go don't go to see our films because we speak about women just women so i just think we should we should go up or, or, or go over this and tell other stories other stories i don't think yeah you... i think it's important to have we we're in a very exciting time because the industry is changing at a, such a speedy pace that we have the opportunity to create characters that we've never seen and we have a yeah. voice that we need to keep using. So it's interesting to me, Sophia, that you would, would she's doing no sex, you're doing all sex in your comedy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're down. But it, it's more about actually lust, lust for life to, to participate, to, to show our entire beings uh, actually, mm -hmm. and to, to get rid of the shame of, of, um, of existing simply in order to get lost absolutely because we're, we weren't allowed to have lust before sex was for procreation and not for pleasure and so mm. now i think we we're it's it, again i think it's super exciting that we can just say and do whatever we want and the the character um in in uh, elisa's series does just that I think as well. I don't think she apologizes. I love that she stands in all of her ugh, and just you love her anyway. And I think that that's a, a groundbreaking um, version of a new woman that that we all I think we all need to see those things. We we're running out of time. I have one question because we are all about networking. I would love to know from each of you um, which uh, if, if there's a woman that um, inspired you in comedy or not in comedy, it doesn't really matter. And, um, and if that person helped you and if you have inspired or helped another person along your, your path in, in your career. So Sophia, why don't we start with you? Uh, yeah, I have two uh, female comedians that I love. Uh, and Lena Dunham, Dunham, Dunham's Girls, and then uh, Pamela Adlon, uh, Better oh, Things. Both oh, of, I yeah, love it. yeah, both those shows are like iconic to me. 
And um, uh, if I have helped someone else, oh, I really hope so. I don't know if I've helped anyone when it comes to comedy. No, just um, in my career. In my career, yeah. Uh, we have been helping out each other a lot in Sweden recent years uh, in our business uh, when it comes to existing in our business to, to be free and our business. So I think uh, we've done it together. I'm super proud of women in my business in Sweden. Thank you. Great, thanks. Alice? Um, well, influences mm. from female creatives, uh, well, of, of course, also Phoebe Waller-Bridge, but um, also Genji Cohen, the creator of Orange is the New Black. Um, yeah, Lena Dunham as well, and yeah, uh, but um, people who help me directly in my personal life or my creative life, um, well, just thinking about 10 years ago at the Berlinale, Linda Zefka, who's um, the, the, um, the, how do you say, like the, the main woman from the perspective German cinema, and I would, I'm, I'm always grateful to her because she, yeah, she showed my first film at the Berlinale, which was a big thing, obviously, for me. And for Lou von Luza, it's clearly uh, a woman called Lou as well, uh, Lucia Haslauer, who I think might be also in the audience. And um, she's from the from ZDF. So, uh, yeah, those are two, two door-opening women to me. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and uh, I'm, well, I could go on, but um, my mother, for sure, as well. <laughs> Paola, what about you? Well, my mother, my mother, first of all, and then uh, a very, very important Italian actress that is Franca Valeri, uh, that created, invented comedy, a grammar comedy for women here, and Monica Vitti, and uh, uh, also Anna Magnani, Anna Magnani, and uh, for example, and also I, I always loved Diane Keaton, for her funny way to be comic uh, and stylish, and uh, also Barbara Streisand, I I loved her. Always love Barbara. The original funny girl. <laughs> I can't yes. wait to be comic. And uh, recently, I I bumped into Phoebe, Phoebe, uh, the Fleabag. And oh, so Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That were also also some men really, really no no and, and men too yes. of course yes just like uh, Monicelli here Monicelli it's a very big director comic director I would like to to go through their work mm -hmm. um, we talked about earlier um, comedy being dangerous and there's this great song in Alice's um, series called fail better um did you write that song uh, i wrote it as uh, lou like the lyrics and um my um partner my boyfriend he is a musician and he's also the guy who's performing it like the the guy okay. who hates mm -hmm. uh, jack mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he wrote the music like he's uh he's he wrote all the music that you can uh hear in lou van Luza. It's great. It's also this great pervasive message throughout the whole thing that because failure is so important, you've got to try a lot of things. And in comedy, you have to fall on your face. So what would you all say to it? Is, is, did, you, did you find throughout the process of, of Sophia of writing Lust, was there a lot of falling on your face? Were there things that just didn't work? Was it more difficult to find what did? Uh, I have to admit that there were times in this process where I just closed my eyes and thought, I really hope this will never happen. <laughs> that's, that's, I really, it's true. Uh, so, so uh, yes, is the answer. But, but we've, we've had a fantastic uh, team around us with writer, director, uh, and the producers who have been so uh, embracing of this project so and, and I've so in that sense and with my my fellow actresses who are also also co-create we've never been alone and I think that's the best way to do take the first step not alone 
Yeah. What was HBO Max um, significant in the in the development in the process of bringing this to to or, or were, was it already fully formed when when they came? No, on no. We contacted them quite early on, and they've been fantastic. They haven't rushed us, and they have just said, "Go, be bolder, uh, be political, political if you want." Uh, so we felt very free uh, in developing this. And they are also fantastic when it comes to, to read and uh, come with feedback. I'm really impressed with HBO. Oh, that's great. Well, we can't wait to see it. HBO is amazing. It's amazing. Paula, tell me about the process with uh, working with the great Alspatek again. And now you have uh, La Fata Ignorante coming out on Disney+. <clears throat> Plus. What, yes. what, what is that like? And I'm counting the days. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was marvelous. First, and Alspatek is the first uh, director that gave me the possibility to, to show something else, something new that is my dramatic level. I think that comedy and drama is the same way. I study comic, comic characters as I study dramatic character. It's not different. So, so this time I'm going to, you, you will see on Disney Plus on uh, half uh, April. Uh, I'm Luisella, I'm um, a woman that sell fruits. But I think to be Brigitte Bardot, I think to be very like to Brigitte Bardot. I live in the night of Brigitte Bardot, so uh, she's very funny. She's so she's so fragile. She's a very strong and fragile woman. Uh, need, she needs love. She needs love to be loved. And each time I can play with both uh, style, I I do. I do enjoy myself, so I'm so proud to show you this this job. And um, Ferdinand Ospetek uh, always brings me far from myself. So she, he is able to to take some something so so deeply, so so intimate, and uh, in the same time it makes me go away. So um, the, the 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 series is very very. I think it's a very good job. We we had fun. Uh, characters are all, always mm, very details, uh, and the story is a uh, is um, very strong. So so and, and new new characters. I go first and Ospetex writes all, always characters for women. Very strange, innovating characters for women, and also his stories as, are always particular. So. Uh, let's give, let's look, let's give a look to, to this job. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I yeah. think all men need to write like Alzbatak. He, I think he's amazing. He's like a god among, uh, among men. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's very exciting. We, we look forward to that. And yeah. at least you are prepping. Is this your first feature as a writer and director? Yes, my first long film. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, it's also a mix, like a tragic comedy um, film, and it's uh, it's about um, about a, a, a gathering of a family set in a house. So it's entirely shot in one, on in one location with six actors. Uh, it's an ensemble piece, an ensemble film. Um, but it's also this uh, mixture of like profound, dark topics and characters, but. Um, the tone hopefully will be um, also funny. Hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. We look forward to that. Ladies, thank you so much. Uh, just to reiterate, if you haven't seen uh, Lou Von Loser on ZDF, uh, check it out and or wait for your streamers. Lust uh, from HBO Max is premiering this Monday at the Berlin Alley. And you can see Paola in her one woman show in Italia, if you like, right now, check your internet. And uh, on Disney Plus with uh, Fatih Ignorante, the innocent angels coming in April. You guys, thank you very much for your thank time. You. It was a pleasure chatting mm, and uh, good luck you. to you all. Everyone stay tuned. We're gonna start breaking out into those networking breakout rooms. I will give it back to Nicole. Thank you. Nice to meet you, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
That was a very inspiring conversation and such great input to take away for our audience. Thank you very much, Kizzy, Paola, Alice, Sophia. Thanks for joining us. So I just see Mariette so, arrived. So please, yes. we, very warm welcome to Mariette Rissenberg. <gasps> Thank ah, you. Nice to have you here. Please start your welcome note. I hope you can hear me. Yes. I'm at, I'm at the Berlinale Talents. That's why it says Berlinale Talents under me instead of Mariette Rissenberg. I'm sorry about that. I'm so happy to be with all of you here. It's two years ago that I remember being in the Meistersaal and talking to you in person. Um, the two years have been maybe a little bit stressful, so I was very happy that the theme which you have for WIFT uh, 2022 is rather the bright side of life and comedy. I think it, it actually is also a theme of the festival. As you know, we have a retrospective focusing on three female comedians from the 30s, which are Mae West, Rosalind Russell and Carol Lombard, so it's very comedy-like. But also the film I'm going to introduce tonight, Rabbi Yakunats versus w, uh, George W. Bush, is a sort of political story as a comedy. There is a stand-up comedian playing the main role. She is uh, of, her parents came from Turkey, but I think she was born here in Melton Kaplan. And she, she plays her act in a very, how shall I say, I like the way she does it, very strong, very entertaining, very humorful and I think that's something we all really like so the film playing after that is with Emma Thompson it's also a bit of a comedy and Emma Thompson is a person who is I would say also a strong character very unconventional and very humorful so I think maybe this is a kind of role model model I would like to live on I'm not so funny but I think being funny is a very strong, how shall I say, it's a, a, a strong asset. People, you can disarm people by being humorous and, and cheerful and at the same time tell the things you really want to convey. So um, there's not much else I want to say. I think WIFT is a great initiative and I'm very proud to be part of this round every time and, and I'm talking to some of the WIFT um, leaders to see what we can do more together. So I hope we can find new ideas and new role models as it was one of the things we were discussing two years ago. Female role models are very important for young women that they have some example or some way to look at um, something they think is worth to follow. So I hope we find a lot of good role models in the Berlinale program this year. And I think we can develop further ideas in the future. Thank you for having me. And I don't want to interrupt your uh, upcoming session too long. So I wish you success. Thank you so much, Mariette. Thank you so much. And all the best for you and the Berlinale in the next days. Thank you. We keep our fingers crossed that everything, everything will go well. Thank you and bye-bye. Enjoy the bye -bye. evening. Thank you very much.